Um, I'm glad you, you mentioned um, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> um, braces. Yes. Um, when a ch- when a child when it's recommended that a child have the braces, is I, I, as an adult, um, it, unlike a child, the adult will always have to maintain as if wearing the um, a retainer, whereas a child does not. Correct. No, a child would have to wear a retainer as well. What the retainer does is it retains the teeth in the position uh, to which they were moved. In other uh-huh. words, uh, when they start with braces, the, uh, the treatment by most orthodontists goes over about two years. Uh, the braces are put on, and the, the wires that... Uh, attached to the brackets where the braces are put on are tightened every couple of weeks. And it's a slow process. The reason that it's slow is uh, you can't move the teeth too fast. If you do, they'll get loose. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to give the chance uh, of the bone to wear away on one side of the tooth, and at the same time it gets deposited on the other side. So mm-hmm. as the tooth moves... Um, bone gets deposited on the side away from the area which it's moved into. Uh, That's why it takes so long. But once it's all done and the teeth are in their proper position, whether it be for a child or an adult, uh, if a retainer is not put on and worn properly, there's a good chance that those teeth will relapse into their former position, and uh, sometimes they do it very rapidly. And it's really a wow. hard thing to see all of that time and all of that work. And we're right back to where we started again because the patients didn't wear their retainers. Retainers are very important. So once, you have, once you've had braces and you've had um, your teeth has been straightened out, then you per- pretty much have to wear a retainer, for the, I guess, for the rest of your life. Well, I don't say you have to wear it forever, but you should wear it, I, I think, for the first year or two anyway. Uh, until the bone really locks those teeth up into their uh, newfound position. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, adults uh, can get orthodontics also. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of adults, if they're missing teeth, let's say you're missing a tooth in the back of the mouth, and mm-hmm. uh, what usually happens is if it's left that way for a very long period of time, the tooth on either side of the space will move into the space. And the tooth Mm -hmm. opposing the space, whether it be on the top or the bottom, has a tendency to grow into the space. So if the teeth aren't replaced uh, relatively soon, the whole bite gets altered because of this movement. Yes. And times the front teeth can open up, and you'll have gaps between the front teeth because they try to move backward into that space as well. Uh, Ah. Once that's happened and uh, the patient wants those spaces closed, uh, what's a good idea to do is to have the orthodontist close those spaces up and then a bridge or uh, an implant can be made to replace the missing tooth. And once Mm -hmm. that's done uh, and the space is blocked by uh, the uh, replacement tooth, uh, Mm -hmm. the spaces will be prevented from opening up again. Ah, I see. How young should a child be taken in to an orthodontist to have braces put on? Usually if a dentist sees that a child is a candidate for braces, most orthodontists want to do it, unless it's a severe case, uh, when all of the baby teeth are lost. So uh, if uh, the child appears to have crowding where their front teeth seem to be overlapping or crowded together, uh, Mm -hmm. the orthodontists usually want to wait until they lose all of their baby teeth before they institute treatment. And uh, to make space uh, for the teeth to be moved back into, sometimes they take out uh, a permanent bicuspid tooth on either side, uh, and the teeth are moved into the space where the socket is of that tooth. Then everything can be straightened out uh, pretty much. Uh, but usually when all of the baby teeth are lost, that's the time to seek an orthodontic consult. 
Now, naturally, there are exceptions. If a, uh, a child is a thumb sucker and mm. um, there's a big open bite in the front of the mouth, which is not co- mm. uncommon with uh, kids that suck their thumbs, it's a very bad habit. Mm. Uh, if uh, the uh, anterior open bite is uh, severe, the mouth in the front mm. can be looked uh, uh, at almost like a fish mouth. There's a big space between the top and bottom teeth. The teeth actually mold themselves around the thumb. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Oh, well, I tell you, the time went by so quickly. It um, did. <laughs> that one out just flies. Yeah. Can you uh, once again give your complete name, your, your title, um, your location? They oh, before before we, before you do that, I I just want to say this so that the, my uh, listening audience can um, uh, focus in on this. But the one thing I like about your practice is that you are open on Sunday. Yes, I am. We're open from Sunday through Thursday. Uh, We're closed Friday and Saturday. Uh, The reason that I got into that was because when I first started back in 92, I wanted to accommodate as many people as possible, especially the blue-collar workers that work six days a week. And when I questioned them to find out what day they had off, I asked them if they were open on, uh, they were free on Saturdays. They said, no, we work six days a week. Our wives work. And practically Sunday is about the best time for us because we don't work on Sunday. I said, fine, I'm going to open Sunday then. I'll just take Saturday off. So that's the reason I got into it. And uh, I have never changed it in the 18 years that I've been here. We've always been open on Sunday. I tell you, it, it, that, is a, that is a wonder because um, the way I found you was because I had an emergency and um, you were open on a Sunday. And I've been with you ever since. <laughs> so um, can you give for my listening audience your complete name and title and the name of your, your um, practice and the location and phone number? My name is Dr. William Lyman Jelly. I'm located at 12 Warburton Avenue in Yonkers. I'm about uh, very close to the intersection of Main Street, Warburton, and... Um, uh, and Warburton Avenues, uh, and Riverdale. It's uh, not too far from that uh, intersection. Uh, my hours are Sunday uh, from 11, uh, Sunday through Thursday, actually, from 11 to 6. Um, Friday and Saturday, we are closed. And uh, before I close with you, Pat, I'd like to uh, uh, make my little pitch again for the kids. Uh, anybody oh, up there, uh, would like to bring in some toys uh, to donate so we could have the Salvation Army do a uh, toy distribution, which is going to be just before Christmas. Uh, please stop in and uh, donate something for the kids. Uh, any old toys you happen to have around that uh, you're thinking of throwing out, stop by and, and give them to us, and we can make some uh, kids' lives a little bit more uh, happy this Christmas. And that's the 21st. That's the 22nd. Century. The last day. Uh, no, I'll tell me, oh, in the name of your business. <laughs> oh, the name of the business is 21st Century Dental and Oral Surgery. Very good. Thank you so much, and um, I look forward to having you on the show maybe again another in the future, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Pat. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Very good. Bye bye. Okay, everyone, that's the end of our show for the day, and I'd just like to thank each and every one of you. And as always, you can always go back to um, the Drive of Five Live and listen to the show. Um, our shows are listed by the date. So the day is date the 13th. You just go back on the on the um, Block Talk Radio forward slash the Drive of Five Live. Um, I'm sorry, um, Internet Chronicles, and you the show, and you can re-listen to it or share the link with your friends. That, um, I thank you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a healthy and healthy and happy one.